In the big bilge tank, we'll keep you in the know. In the big bilge tank, we'll fix your techie woes. And we'll break things up, we'll make things till we're all together raking. And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bilge tank. In the big bilge tank, come and join our fire crew. In the big bilge tank, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it. And we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello and welcome to episode 040 of The Bilge Shank, live from Sheffield on Sea. Ahoy! Hello! Uh, today we are going to look at our Internet of Seed setup, which Sandy's been working on over mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks. Yep. Um, and we've got a load of uh, new products, we've got some Kickstarters to look at. Yeah, just um, general light, yeah. easy going week. Last week was intense. Last week was yeah, amazingly intense. Ooh. Still now dealing with the repercussions. Oh yeah, we've got yeah. some great... Um, Kind of retweeting on the cluster stuff, though. Yeah, yeah. It hit a nerve, I think. It was uh, an interesting subject. And Docker, kind of, because Alex did such a good article, Docker retweeted it, and they've got all loads of followers. And they have indeed. Yeah, which was, yeah, awesome source. So, what we're going to kick off with? Internet seeds, internet seeds. Internet seeds. So, we have a couple of things going on here. If you are watching on the Pimeroni Plants Twitter, you'll see we've got the article there. And scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Sorry, scrolly, scrolly. Does this have an embedded yeah. Twitter? Oh, I don't know. I should, should have loaded up Twitter. Uh, essentially, well, Sandy, do you want to tell us about the setup, and then we'll talk more about what we're doing with it? Yeah. So basically, um, this is the IKEA Vaxer. Um, so it's a hydroponic system. Um, so that is basically growing plants without any soil. Um, so the idea is that you've got. Um, some kind of uh, growing medium that the plants grow on. That's this kind of um, rubbly stuff. So isn't yeah, it? that's this kind of gravelly um, stuff. Pumice, I believe. Yeah, it's actually stuff. yeah, it's pumice gravel. Um, <laughs> so essentially, that just soaks up all the water and keeps the plants really well hydrated. Um, yeah. And then um, on the top here, um, there's an LED lamp. And it's basically three sets of um, three LEDs, each of which has two white LEDs and a red. Um, I think the thinking behind the red LED is that red light is better for stimulating flowering and fruiting in plants. Oh, um, the more you know. So, yeah, that's that's the theory behind it. Um, so, yeah, so the idea is you can have this thing in your house and you can grow things like lettuce, um Herbs, yeah. uh, strawberries, tomatoes, chilies. Um, yeah. So any kind of um, herbs, you know, herby type plant is, is ideal for this. I did space um, plant. Did you? Did you indeed? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of knew you did. And I wasn't <laughs> okay. um, how long do they actually stay in the hydroponic system? Then do you take these out at some point and repot or what? Um, so they start off actually in these. Um, I don't know if you can actually see, but there's um, little. Um, uh, little sponges, aren't they? Little they? They start more densely packed in little sponges. They did, like, yes. Yeah. So there's yeah. like a there's a germination tree that they start off in, and basically you put the seeds on these little um, rock wool plugs, um, and they get submerged in water, so they soak up the water, um, and then they take about a week to germinate. Mm-hmm. Um, once they've germinated, you take the plug out. And germinating is what when they start presenting their leaves or whatever. Yeah, it's basically when the when the seeds uh, shoot and then they have um, leaves that are about. I think this rec- what's the length they recommend like four well, and two leaves. Yeah. So when it's got two leaves, kind of like a little solar panel for a plant, um, then you're ready to plant on. Okay. Yeah. So basically, then they get taken out of the the germination tree. And you put them into these um, these little pots with the gravel in, um, and then put them in back into the tree. That's um, it's basically I don't know if you can see, but um, there's kind of water. <laughs> there's a swamp in water. there. Yeah, there's quite <laughs> quite a lot of water in there. So like about half of the plants submerged in the water, okay. and obviously mm. this gravel soaks up all of the water. But there's enough space in the pumice for air to get to the roots, which is how they grow so well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because <coughs> they always need that oxygen available for the roots. Cool. Um, so this is our control um, 
hydroponic system. It's where so scientifically controlled. We've moved it from the control area <laughs> yeah. to bring it into the bilge tank. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> this one, this one just gets natural light from our room, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. I say half yeah. of it gets natural light because. Yeah, we don't put a lamp in it or anything, so we're just seeing how quickly that grows versus the one that's live on the internet. Should we get the one live on the internet and see how that's yeah. doing? Let me bring up the Twitter feed for it. <coughs> Pimmer Stephanie plans. Oh man, that's freaky. Browserception. Um, ah, you see? And these were these were triggered at the same time, weren't they? These guys. They were set up at the same time. Uh, yeah. They were, yeah. Yeah. That looks like there's more growth on the on the uh, kind of artificial light ones, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh hell yes. Yeah. Uh, especially because they're getting twice the amount of light. Twenty four hour coverage, exactly, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Um, this is an IR camera shot, by the way. It's not um, real color. Uh, there we go. You can see them in real color there. Yep. So we now have. Um, you can't scroll that. We now have no. two two cameras. Um, one on either. Um, support at the side of um, the unit mm -hmm. um, so it's basically just a Raspberry Pi Zero and then the cable for the camera runs up the up the inside of the this arm yeah. and the camera's mounted at the top here looking um, down on the plants so, so you've got a, a natural colour camera on one side and you've got an IR that's camera that's right, on the with, a, with yeah. a blue filter on it <coughs> okay. um, so, the, so the blue filter filters out um, Basically, all um, so so the idea is that you're you're looking for a what's called a near infrared um, image. Okay. Um, and I think I believe that this blue filter doesn't give you exactly a near infrared image, but it's kind of um, a bit of a fudge to 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 get that. Um, and then basically, what it involves is a bit of kind of image analysis where you um, subtract the red channel from the near infrared mm -hmm. um, and then you divide by the near infrared plus red um, and that becomes your green channel it's very straightforward um, really isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah so it's quite complicated i think the ideal way to do it is if you have a, a visible camera mm -hmm. and an infrared camera at the same position essentially and, yeah and same position then overlay the two images that's that's the, the proper way to do it and but did you look here you see this chart here can we just go oh, we'll get that up there so if you look at that, that very that matches pretty closely the lights we've got on the artificial light system we've got the blue light and we've got the near red light okay that seems slightly off there seems slightly off yeah, it's not quite the blue or near red, near infrared we're looking at. I don't know what chlorophyll A it's, and B are. Mm. I'm not uh, entirely sure. So, so they are just two different types of chlorophyll that absorb. Um, ah, right. And presumably the reason wavelengths of light. The reason the tree looks green is because it's reflecting the green stuff. Yeah. And it's absorbing it's, the blue and the reds and the exactly, yellows or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's very cool. There is a whole blog post on the Raspberry Pi blog called "What's That Blue Thing Doing Here." Mm -hmm. um, which, if you want to read a bit more about this, uh, it looks like they cover it in quite a lot of depth. Links under the video. Oh yeah, it'll be and on the YouTube links. UK Scones here to advocate to all the children using Raspberry Pis that they should drink heavily. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wrong account. Hey Scone, who's in New York at the moment? <laughs> Very nice. What time is it in New York? It'll be like six hours behind. So yeah, mm. nine a.m. something like that. Yeah, early start. Uh, what are we looking at? So, um, yeah, so the setup's kind of cool. It looks like it's working. I mean, the growth on the, the artificially lit plants, as you say, 24 hours, um, certainly looks to be yeah. quite substantial. Do we know what current drawer it is? Uh, no idea. Yet. We should measure that. No, we, we do. It's, I think it was measured at 12 watts or thereabouts. Okay. Interesting. Because cool. they're one watt LEDs, more or less. Um, Sandy was saying they sh normally take about five to seven days to germinate, mm -hmm. but as we're going great guns by day three, okay. so I think the light really helps a lot. And the other thing that was noticeable with these guys, because they were in a windowsill, is all the plants were tipping over towards the light source, <laughs> yeah. whereas the the ones in the kitchen, which have the the proper artificial lighting set up, they were growing, they're going straight up, they're like bu uh, bushing out essentially, which yeah. Yeah. Um, presumably is a good thing. So we'll be continuously improving this setup. Mm -hmm. Sandy, you're working on some mounts and things, aren't you, for it? Yeah, so I've and tried... obviously we've added the infrared camera. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I've been kind of mocking up. Um, Let's go close up. A bit of a 
Shall, um, I, shall I take this out of the way now and we'll move on yeah. to the uh, other um, stuff? Yep. So. Watch you don't spill it. I'm trying not to. <laughs> All over Paul. Um, How much? Mm, Bill of water. Yeah, so this is basically just a little mounting plate um, that has the Raspberry Pi Zero, the camera, uh, the flotilla modules that we're using. That's the weather, colour, light and motion. Mm -hmm. um, we're not actually doing anything with the motion readings at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but the idea is um, you can use that to tell if anyone's kind of disturbed the, the unit. If anyone's after your herbs. So like an alarm, yeah, like a herb <laughs> alarm. Okay. Um, but you, you come from kind of a university lab setting, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Where my... people tamper with stuff all the time and it's infuriating. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is something I'm kind of um, working on. Um, and this is um, our top secret um, flotilla mini dock. Um, so that <laughs> super top secret. Yeah, now. super top <laughs> secret. Um, so the idea is that this is um, a smaller version of the full size dock, which has eight ports. Uh, this one's only got four, mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit more convenient for something like this, where you want the smaller size. Yeah, you so only need four modules essentially. That's that's the full size I'll one. Put one up for you. Um, and side by side. And obviously that's got the protective case on it, mm -hmm. um, which means that you can't really mount it to anything. Yeah. Um, but it's not really designed for that anyway. Um, whereas this mini dock, um, I believe, is going to come as it is, like this, yeah, without, without, board, without exactly, the case. Yeah. Um, so the idea is this is really handy for mounting to you know, any projects that you might have, like, like this. Yeah, um, slightly cheaper, more Internet of Thingsy. Mm -hmm. Mm, very so nice. It's, uh, yeah, I like it. And um, Sandy's written up a great blog post. I don't know if we mentioned this last week, but it's worth mentioning again. I think Those we did, yeah. a really uh, exhaustive, but in the good sense, blog post on the entire setup with some great photos, uh, a little bit of talk about the science behind it. Some this is this is how the setup kind of looks in our kitchen at the moment, which is pretty cool. Yep. Uh, how you mount the cameras, the wrap straps we need to get in stock. We've been talking about yep. it for ages. We'll, we'll get those um, on the. Sh on the store. You're currently buying from Amazon, aren't you? Yeah. Which yeah. we can't have that. No. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just it's just a really nice setup. The code is now on GitHub. Yep. So you can go onto the Pimerani GitHub account yep. and look at the Internet of Seeds project. Uh, and Alex has bought it already, hasn't he, for his entire Alex, crest. Ellis. Oh yeah, he's doing uh, Crest Grow, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. I think Raspberry Pi retweeted that today, so look out for that. <laughs> Um, and then we're going to do things like we're going to improve the look of the images so they're a bit more friendly and shiny yep. you know, when we get around to it and just generally see if we build this into a nice little simple time lapse monitoring thing that feels nice and fluffy. Yeah, and um, actually this segues really nicely into something else <coughs> just because the set of sensors is so um, similar. Should we go back to us on the big screen? Sure. There we go. Oh. Um, in the, I think all of those sensors you're using there are actually on the Enviro hat bar the light sensor but we have a colour sensor so it's kind of fine anyway right? yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so the I think the light sensor has um, it can do RGB plus it's got a clear channel as the well the colour sensor yes that's yeah, right yeah, yeah. Um, um, what it misses that, that the light sensor has I think the light sensor can do I, is it IR separately can it not sure can't mm. remember anyway yeah so maybe it's got a backup thing so it mm. can eliminate or include IR at leisure. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. But it's, um, presumably it would be perfectly s sensible to migrate this project to an EnviroFat to make it more compact. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be interesting. Yeah. We should try yeah. that. Stick yeah. on the close-up. Yeah. Let's have a look. We can do that with the other one that's got the IR camera on it. Oh, right. We can, yeah. have, we can have them competing. Yeah. We'll have a sensor off. <laughs> Show it on the uh, camera, then. These are the Enviro EnviroFat um, production boards. Oops. The guys are just making up a few hundred of them now. Um, they will probably not be going on sale until Phil comes back from holiday because he hasn't finished his homework, not a boy. <laughs> um, but that's okay. He needed some time off, so we've, we've let him go. Um, but yeah, the EnviroFat's uh, a really nice compact little sensor board. You've got a uh, motion sensor, colour sensor, barometer and temperature sensor and four ADC channels as well, so you can hook up your own yeah. sensors. Just four really good ADCs chucked in on the side. That's it. 12-bit ADC, ADC yeah. very nice. We've got a price for it yet? I, yeah, I don't actually. It's got to be somewhere around the £12 mark, I think. I, yeah. I have to check. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not listed on the store. It'll be up there sometime next week. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice little thing. <coughs> Dead handy. Yep. Um, next up, 
Micro bits? Micro bit. So uh, this week the BBC announced micro bit pre orders, um, and we are offering micro bit for pre order on the store. Uh, we have it in four different bundles, and we believe we should be getting stock around the end of June. So uh, it's not actually going to be that long, that three, four weeks or yeah, something. Yeah, it's June already. It is. How it did is. that happen? Um, but it's quite exciting. I think it's, you know, the micro bit is a very different take on. Um, I guess on this kind of approach that it's not really an SPC, but it's, you know, it's more like an Arduino style thing. It's an Arduino style thing. They've done some things that Arduino have kind of only just started doing, but have been talking about for a long time. Yeah. So a lot more of the visual coding in the browser and stuff, and then yes. you just drop it onto the micro bit. So in terms, yeah, I think there's been a gap left there for the micro bit to sneak in and say, hey, here's how we do things these days. And Arduino.cc are just starting that with their Arduino cloud, aren't they? They are. But they need to hurry up, because people are stealing a march from them. I think for beginners, it's a great setup, though, isn't it? Just being able to open a browser and have a play. You wouldn't want to yeah. do that as you get deeper into these it's things. It's just the Bluetooth just as well is on there. Yeah. Price is fairly reasonable as well. Twelve pounds, uh, yeah. £13 pounds yeah. for the microbit itself. Mm. But that's not, yeah, not bad for something with Bluetooth on board. That's actually pretty good. And it's got yeah. MicroPython as well, isn't it? You yeah. can run MicroPython, but you can't run micro, MicroPython and use the Bluetooth stack because there's not enough really? RAM uh, at the moment. Uh, um, it seems likely that someone will manage to optimise the stack down to the point where it's viable, but at the moment you can't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a cute little thing, and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with it. Yeah, uh, we've got it. We've uh, basically we've bundled it with some great Katronic kits. Uh, Katronic are one of the launch partners for Microbits, so they've been doing a lot of work with BBC to um, kind of prepare for the launch and, and prepare materials and things. And as part of that, they've put together some nice kits, like a, a complete starter kit that has um, a load of uh, components and breadboard and like a breakout for the Microbit edge connector. And it includes a lot of projects, a little project book that lets you um, just try out kind of hardware projects, electronics projects with it, which is nice. And then beyond that, we've got some more basic kits as well. So, yeah. Cool. Very cool. We like uh, it. Let's go and ask if uh, it's cash up front or charge front shipping. Uh, our, our storefront only supports taking payment as the order is placed. Yep. So it, it is cash up front. Um, obviously, we can cancel the order at any time if you want to, but yeah. Yeah, we should have good stock day one as well. We'll have plenty of stock, yeah. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so as Les Panda mentions, actually, um, the microbit's a really great complement for the Pi because the microbit's got Bluetooth, the Pi's got Bluetooth. So you can start using the microbit as a control of your Pi project. Now Kith. Now Kith. Yeah. Yes. Um, but it means you can do uh, things like Ni Wun, uh, Ni Wun Chuk. Ni Wun Chuk. We Ni. a very famous film actor. Uh, we Nunchuk. Uh, style stuff with the accelerometer. So you can make this like a controller for your Pi projects. Mm -hmm. um, there's some sensors and things on here as well, which is kind of cool. It's got a, a compass on there too. So yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a nice board. Full six degrees of freedom and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fun. And the LEDs. And a little LED display, yeah. which I can make turn on on these buttons. There we go. Can't really see it very well. Yar! Is what it says. Down. Yar! Yeah. So yeah, very cool. Sweet. We like that. Uh, and now it's on to the inevitable Kickstarters. Yes, Kickstarter of the week. Hold on, is, is it? Let me just see if we've only got Kickstarters. Oh, no, we do w one more thing from the uh, Learning Portal. It's, this is a brand new article that Sandy's put together. Um, it's essentially a guide for soldering our Pi Zero fats. So, just to help you get started if you haven't done it before. Um, it's actually quite a good guide to map onto soldering the Pi Zero header because you can follow essentially the same steps, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, some nice photos. It just shows you how to get a get a good result, really. So, check it out on the learning portal. Sweet. We like. Okay. Right, mini toy three D printer. Hmm. Yeah, Past its uh, goal already. It's yet another three D printer. Um, <laughs> yet another small, cute three D printer. I mean, that's even within that niche. There's quite a lot yeah. of competition there, right? I think was there not one recently that failed? I think. Oh, it was, it was. A, yeah. yeah, it was a big, um, big failure, wasn't it? I can't yeah. remember the name of it, but yes. I think basically one of the investors um, spent all of the money on on his house. On his house, yes. <laughs> Oops, that was the story. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of a partnership, and Primo was it? No, not not. No, that. no. Primo no, was very it was, successful. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but yes, it was. Um, it was a bit of a mess. Yeah, but he did a really good article on it, which you know, while it's not the same as. Uh, Actually shipping the units. <laughs> it's, it's a really in-depth uh, 
really in-depth article. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, what was particular? Oh man, that thing's huge. Yeah, so it's quite. <laughs> you, it's quite I thought it was tiny. Yeah, but you I can actually fit like, a yeah. child inside yeah. that. <laughs> Why has it got four filaments on top? So is it meant to be um, kind of just super accessible and super friendly, rather than any sort of any? I don't know. Maybe you can three D print a child with it. Maybe okay. that's maybe that's the idea. Right. Maybe if you don't want a real child, <laughs> then you can three D print one. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, I did. I mean, okay. I'm not hugely excited. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Should we move on? This one I like though. ATX power supply. Yeah, this is a nice idea. Cool, actually, yeah. um, so who's running this? I don't know. Who's running this? Richard, Richard Wilmot. Wilmot. Sounds familiar. Uh, it does Too actually. Created. What else has he created? Oh, ah. oh, no, different, different, valve. but yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, this one's kind of cool because it basically lets you take a an old, you know, an ATX style power supply from your PC or whatever and turn it into a bench power supply, caveat supply. Um, it'll be interesting to see how good this is in its final form. I mean, ATX power supplies are notoriously noisy and horrible. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be, yeah, I don't know how much effort's gone into kind of quietening that down, but so it's I think an interesting the, idea. I think the idea is you have 12 volt, 5 volt, and 3v3. So that's that seems right. very likely, yeah. Um, and I think it's set up to 20 amps total current. That's the main thing with something like an ATX power supply, is obviously they can be like up to three, four hundred, six hundred 600 watts even. Yeah. So yeah, they're pretty yeah. beefy. Um, there doesn't actually appear to be any sort of decoupling on here at all. So. Yeah, interesting. We'll see. Hmm. I mean, it essentially, it appears to be a pass-through, doesn't it? Really, with uh, some spring terminals for your own connections on the other side. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, no rewards left. All gone. All gone. Oh, well, that's <laughs> interesting. So it's like a fixed run, basically. Of yeah. I mean, that's one way of doing it. Okay. To be sure. And this one is ridiculous. I just don't even. <laughs> this is a floating plant pot. Oh, this is like the second one, though. This is... Somebody, it's not even the first floating plant pot. That's how somebody did a bonsai one, right? which was really good looking. Yeah. And then somebody... I don't know if it's the same people, but I think it might be somebody who said, Ooh, me too. Because yeah. often with these things, you'll see the first version, and then you'll see a second and a third come out, mm -hmm. as people do kind of another wallet, or another 3D printer, or something else. Yeah. Um, you'll see the same idea recur as somebody tries to get kind of the press around it. It's... It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Apparently they have a specially shaped magnets thing and the platformer <laughs> and so I Just how much power is that actually consuming? Apparently the, the whole pitch is that it makes your plant grow better because it has movement through the air and I guess that's good and light from all angles. and. Uh, I think that's probably <laughs> tenuous <laughs> science at best. <laughs> I kind of agree. <laughs> um, and it makes the yeah, it makes the thing rotate. Oh, oh. Okay, does it left? Yeah, it can change the direction just oh, by changing uh, polarity. I anyway, if you want to spend two hundred dollars for a plant pot, go nuts. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> this one's actually kind of cool, but kind of also nuts at the same time. Though it's gone through the roof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a thousand dollars. It was, he was kind of going and going and going, and then it hit the right thing and went just ping. Just went over. Yeah. Wow. A tube amp for your Raspberry Pi. Let's all stare at it. <laughs> it's so majestic. Um, it, this is kind of. I kind of want one just to have one. I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't even use it, but it does look back really it, cool. Back it, prom, back it, right? <laughs> and I'm in incognito. Oh, I don't okay. want to get back to my desk. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's kind of cute. That's kind of the opposite of the fat deck, isn't it? That's it kind is. Of at, the other, is the th at the other end of the spectrum. Let's see what's the pricing like. So like a hundred dollars or so. Yeah, only about hundred dollars, and then up to about one twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently less. Always at CPC HQ. Wow. Yeah. Poke, poke them about stuff, Les. Why is this in Look at Rachel and says she knows. <laughs> Where's my swag? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's oh, it's just kind of cool, isn't it? Massive heat sinks, huge caps, and nice big valve. Game on. You might need that ATX power supply though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Sweet. A couple of people have asked for kind of headphone amps and things as well as fat decks. So we can't oh, do yes, we're working on that. Yeah, we're, we're working, working on an amp, aren't we? Will it be headphone or just general? Uh, I'm working on two. I'm working on a 
Fat Beat DAC, which is a Fat DAC with integrated amplifier. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be again kind of like really bare bones, probably as cheap as we can make it, fifteen quid or something. And we're also working on a Fat Hat VU, which is a hat format DAC that has a VU on it as well. There's no mm -hmm. lead on there, so you can use that for kind of track selection or you know. Uh, visualization features. So. That's going to be very cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're working on both of those at the moment. Sweet. Just don't have much time and too many things to do. Boom. Yep. Should we go full camera and look at some new products? Okay. Actually, I think it's only it's one small range of products, right? Uh, we've got a few things. We've done the Envirofile already. We have. Um, the engineer tools have been incredibly popular because wow. they're just super super cool. Close up. Yeah. So we decided to get more of them in. I just love the handles. The <coughs> on the handles is incredible. It's a bit technic technical, isn't it? And but it, it feels great as well. It, you'd yeah. think it was form over function, but actually the textures and the ridges and things feel really good. So we had the mini Negisaurus, and this is the Negisaurus. This is like their flagship product. The maxi Negisaurus. This is for yeah. like your M5s, M6s and beyond, I guess. And just, yeah. yeah, cutting wire. I've used it to cut this wire when I was testing out the crimpers. So show the Negisaurus label on it, Sandy, on the other side, because that's, yeah, it's Negisaurus, Negisaurus. Um, and they're just, oh, we just love the engineer stuff, it feels so great. Yeah. You, you can tell it's um, quality tools. Chop the wire in half. Just, just, Lie don't hold camera. back. Ah, Negisaurus. <laughs> okay, we need a strong Sandy. Yeah, I can't do it. Oh. I failed. <laughs> Bushman, there we go. The whole point of the Negis yeah, <laughs> nice, nicely mangled. Sir. The whole point of the Negisaurus range is this uh, shape to the tip, which is designed to help you remove screws or nails or things like that. There's a there's a horizontal grip as well as the normal vertical grip, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. they are great for removing things like rusty screws, um, you know, un unscrewing things that you can't get a uh, pair of pliers into, something like that. Yep. But, they're there yeah, to they're to grip, grip it and just not let go. Indeed. And then next up, we've got some needle nose pliers, again from Engineer, which are very nice. Look at that. In the corner there. there we go. The, the other thing I find with the Engineer stuff is that the, the tension on the spring just always feels right. Yep. Like, so some tools it's far too ha hard, other tools it's too weak, and I, I just like the uh, kind of level they choose. Well, they've kind of chosen actual springs rather than just having leaves mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. Which I guess you, maybe you've got more control over that, I, I don't know. Well, I think it's the proper way to do it. But they're really nicely machined as well. Like the joints are very, very, um, very flush, very tidy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's the needle nose pliers. I think those. That's just a sample piece that we've got, but we do have some on the way. They didn't yeah. have any stuff. They'll be appearing soon. They'll be soon. And then the last one is a crimping tool, which we're looking at. Um, is that that's already crimped. So. Yep. Well, here's a bare crimp, and Sandy's just cut some wires. Ooh, do we trust him to attempt to use that? It, it's it's <laughs> and it was zero training. Let's see what yeah. happens. You need to yeah. get it right. It's uh, uh, there's, your, there's, your, the there's your crimp slush. I want to. I haven't had a go at crimping this yet. I'm gonna have a go after Sandy. Yeah, so it gives you a little diagram to show you which way around to do it. But it takes those little leaves and folds them over the wires, and it's uh, it's a nice motion to watch. It's got some kind of safety um, clip on it. Uh, do we know what size this is? What uh, the biggest one. Biggest, biggest one. one. Go big or go home. So we've got three of these in different sizes and different slight functions. Uh, we're just deciding which one to stock at the moment, which is the kind of most useful. And we think it's the orange one that Sandy's holding there. Which also has the bonus of being orange. Yeah. By virtue of that kind of awesome. Too much red already. Yeah. It's good because I'm just building up my little rotating Done tool. I don't know, give it a go. Done that, right? So look. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think you, yeah, you put the crimp in and then you uh, align the wire and press. How's it feel? How's the action on that, Sandy? <laughs> yeah, it seems pretty good, actually, yeah. Very yeah, nice. Uh, Do the long ones as well, they're the bugger. That's the um, yeah. strain relief, isn't it? Yeah. Onto the plastic. So you don't need to do those. But the, the way they curl is amazing. Just like curls into a little loop. Let's have a look at that. So if you can get that out. Yeah, it's stuck in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go, look, look at, at that. that. First wow. time. Look, and can you do it slightly well, slide on? Because you just see it curled around and it's just so elegant and origami like. Oh man, They're lovely, aren't they? <laughs> it's not focusing. Ah. Yeah. 
Look. Never mind. Trust us, it's beautiful. You should buy some tools. Oh, yeah. Just to check it out yourself. There's Whether you need them is largely immaterial. <laughs> is it that slot? Uh, no, it goes on top of the little... Oh, like in um, there? On top of the concave bit. Uh, like that? No, like that. So the back rests on there. Yeah, okay. The concave bit. And you reckon on the biggest one? Yeah. On there? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, possibly. Grrr. Oh, no. I, don't think, I think I've done it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Practice. I think I may have pushed that out. Do you want me to do it again? I'd love you to do that, sadly, because <laughs> I'm clearly incapable. <laughs> yeah, that's a mess. Never mind. Prim. So, yeah, the Fat Dax, no plans for a headphone amplifier, but IQ Audio do have something for you because Gordon's made, he's got his Zero version and it has an add on headphone amplifier. If you specifically want that, you can get that. Mm hmm. But at the moment, we have no plans. We have no plans for one that's digital out, and we have no plans for a headphone amp. We've certainly no plans for digital out. I think the yeah, I don't know what, what one we'd like to do, but we just need to get a different DAC, don't we? It'll probably be like a Cirrus Logic part or something. Yeah, but yeah, no uh, plans as yet. But then things change. We didn't have plans for any of these things <laughs> ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. I think that's it. We're also having a look at cheap tripods. So we got some in from China. Because people have been asking for a proper How do I kind turn of. That off? Uh, you can't turn that from there. You need oh, to can't you? Oh. Yeah. We so we've got some samples from China for cheap little things and GoPro hats. They're called monopods, aren't they? These things. Uh, Is that no, right? It's many tripods. Oh, right. It's a monopod. Monopods, one leg. Is it mono? Oh, this. So oh, I see how that works. Monopod. <laughs> tripod. Duopod. <laughs> Biped, biped in fact. <laughs> we're bipeds. Um, yeah, so we're working on adapting our camera mount to fit onto GoPro mounts and then go onto a tripod like that. Do you want to get on the close up? Yeah, yeah. stick it on the close up. I broke this one, Paul. This, one um, is rubbish, this, is why we, this is why we test them because China has a lot of very cheap stuff. Mm -hmm. So there, we've got it sideways at the moment and we still need to refine this, but it's basically working Oops. where it slides into any of the kind of cheap. GoPro like accessories. So if you want to mount your Pi camera and Zero on like a car or on your chest or on your head, then this will be the way to do it. So we, we want to tap into that whole ecosystem of China producing well, it's GoPro kind of, mounts. GoPro mounts, mounts, isn't it? Because yeah. like things like suction pads, yeah. uh, suction cups and stuff. The There's just so many there. there. Yeah, exactly. And they've been churning out of injection moulding for a few years and now they've probably got them in a warehouse somewhere. We're not going to stock that one, are we? No, I've broken <laughs> another leg. <layer. laughs> I wasn't even trying as well, it just popped out. Yeah. I don't know. This one's junk. Yeah, I mean, they are at the cheap end of things because, yeah. you know. That one seems much better, though. Yeah, it's just pretty solid, this yeah. one. Yeah, we want to see how it is after a few weeks of use. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. We need to take them out and road test them. Um, yeah. There's, um, I think, is it Gorilla Pod? Is the, the kind of trade name? That's for the really these? chunky, yeah. yeah, the nice big one of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we yeah. are looking at these little knockoff gorilla pods almost. Yeah. Not a knockoff. I think there probably wasn't much of a patent there for the ball joint thing. No, I think that's been done before. <laughs> oh, gorilla pod just made it famous and yeah. good. Yeah. So, anyway, look out for those things coming up. And, yeah. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And on hopefully, this video. we're back next week with. A Philip. I think so. I think he's back next week. I don't know when exactly. Yeah. Hopefully he'll be back. He could be in a mountain in Greece somewhere by now. Mm. Living the life of a hermit. He could be. He like cut his hair and everything. He did before he went. It was very strange. Yeah. I think he's having a midlife crisis. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. See you later folks. Bye. Bye.